Reinforcement learning is somewhat special in that it receives some teaching signal, but not as much as in supervised learning. So it sits somewhere between supervised and unsupervised learning. The teaching signal that it gets is either whether it has done something good or bad. So it's a scalar teaching signal. But what's so special about re uh, reinforcement learning is that you have an agent that has to make decisions, right? Either it can go left or it can go right, for instance. Once it has done that, it gets either reward or punishment, depending on whether it was good or bad. And typically, it's just that's just called reward. Can be positive reward or negative reward. So I recommend to to pause here for a moment and read this very nice um, short description of the essence of reinforcement learning. However, I will go straight to the more formal description and use this didactic example for that. So in reinforcement learning we have states and states are these little boxes and the agent can be in that state. So X is the agent and the blue square here is the state in which the agent currently is. The agent can take actions. In this case, it can, for example, go down. It could also go left or could go up. If it's in the middle somewhere, it has four directions where it can go. In this case, in this particular scenario, that's just one example, uh, the agent gets a negative reward of minus one for each step that it takes, but it does not have the option not to move unless it is in one of these two red squares, which are the absorbing states. So once it arrives in this state, it is allowed not to do any step anymore. So, and since it gets a reward of minus one for each step that it takes, of course, it should move as quickly as possible into one of these two absorbing states and then just rest there. So it can thereby minimize its negative reward. The states have a description, in this case it's the coordinate of the box, and they have a value, minus 4 or minus 3 or whatever. These values are unknown to the agent, so the agent has to learn these values and it has to learn a so-called policy. A policy sort of is a strategy how to move in that environment. And these two are closely related, as we will see in a moment. Ideally, the value of the states corresponds to the expected reward given an optimal policy. So each time the agent moves from one state to another, right? Each time my little agent here moves from one step from one side to the other, it gets a reward, and in this case, the reward is. R of t is minus 1 for each step that the agent takes. And that is this reward. And the expected reward is simply the sum of all the rewards that the agent gathers from now, which is t0, to the infinite future. And that, of course, depends on the state in which the agent currently is. So this is S of T0, which is called referred to here as S0. So right now the, the agent is in state S0, and then it takes a series of actions, and for each action it receives a reward. And if you sum all that up, that would be the reward that it gets, and if it's sort of a prediction about the future, that would be the expected reward. So, in the example above, if we assume 
that the agent is, has this policy. So for each state, there's an error that leads into another state, right? Except for the absorbing states. And that is a policy, right? So the agent can behave according to these arrows. And if it does, these are the true values of the states, i.e. these are the expectation values um, for the reward. For example, if the agent is in this state, then according to this policy it would first move to the right and then down. And if you do that, we get an expect we get a reward of minus one for this step, minus one for this step, etc. So we add one, two, three, four, five steps which add up to a re uh, uh, expected reward of minus five. That's why this state here has the value of minus five. So this is a true value of all these states, right? I mean, these states are, are nearer to this absorbing state. So these are the true values of the states given this policy. Now, but obviously, I mean, we already see that this is not an optimal policy. It would be much better to move directly to the left if the agent starts in this state. These are the true values given this policy. But these values are not known to the agent, so the agent has to learn that. So how does that work? So let's look sort of at a maybe a lower right corner. So let's assume, and this is the absorbing state, right? Okay, so the agent, I mean, has a map or a function that expresses the value of the different states, and initially, of course, there are wrong values in this. Um, so let's say there's three here, there's four here, there's minus one here, five, one, two, minus three. Yeah? And, okay, and the agent, I mean, let's tell the agent that this has the value zero because once it is there, it doesn't have to move anymore and then it doesn't get any punishment anymore. So, let's assume the agent, we put the agent somewhere, right? We put it here. Then the question is, okay, what should the agent do? The agent can actually... Um, not plan ahead, but it can see the values of the states directly around it. Right, so put a no, let's put a minus 3 here and a minus 4 so that there's very little incentive to go there uh, and minus 5 here. So let's consider this situation and sort of the uh, with this policy, how the values that are initialized to these wrong values, how they can be corrected and learned to these correct values. And we follow strictly this policy. We will consider how to optimize the policy in a moment. But right now we fix this policy and we just try to learn the value function. And we do that by placing the agent randomly in different uh, locations in different states of this environment and then see what it can do in order to adapt, learn the values to correct values. Okay, so let's put the agent in this state and then it moves by the policy, it moves to the right. Yeah? So now it sees here it has a value of 5 and it sees it has a value of minus 1 here and it it feels that it gets a punishment of minus one or a reward of minus one on the way to this to this state. 
Now it's quite obvious that the state, that the value of this state cannot be 5 if you move into a state with a value of minus 1 and you receive a punishment of minus 1 on the way. Yeah? So, this value needs to be corrected to a value of minus 2. Minus 2 is the expectation value or expectation, expected reward in this state plus a reward on the way to this state. Yeah? So what we do, we correct this 5 to a minus 2. Yeah? Now the agent is in this state. It will move according to this policy, right? It will move down. It sees an expected reward of 4 and receives a reward of minus 1 on the way. And that means minus 1 is not a correct value, right? It should be 3. So we correct this to 3 because that's 4 minus 1. Right? If the expected reward is 4 in this state, then it is 3 in this state if it moves down. Okay, finally it moves down to this absorbing state and with the same argument the value 4 is incorrect, it uh, should be minus 1. Yeah? And now we see at least this value is correct. Right? That's the correct value, but the others are still wrong. So now we place the agent again into some of one of the random states. Let's say we put it here. Then same argument, the value should not be 1. It should be 2, right? 3 minus 1. Then it moves to the right, so it should not be 3. It should be minus 2. Right? And then we go down, and that's fine. The value is correct. And by repeating many of these processes, so we place it here, let's say, this gets this gets corrected um, to minus 3. Right? Then we go from here to there, this gets corrected to minus 1. Then we start here again, this gets corrected to 2. Then from here to there, this gets corrected to minus 2. This is correct, etc. Then we place it here again, let's say, then this gets corrected to minus 3 and so on. Yeah. If we're here, it gets corrected to minus 3. If we're here, and so on. Right. So by, by going through these different states and always updating the state where it comes from by the value of state where, where it goes into plus the reward that it receives on the way, the values become more and more correct yeah, until it converges to this situation. So this is how um, the correct value function can be learned if you have a fixed policy. And that's written in, 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 in an equation here. So the value in the next time step of state S equals the value of the state that it goes into, and that's given here by this capital S function. So capital S is the fun is the state where you get into if you're currently in state S and you take an action A that's possible in state S. Yeah. So a state and a particular action brings you into a new state. Yeah. For example, if you're in this state and you take the action going to the right, then you're in this state. So this is the capital S state and this is the lowercase s state. Yeah. And you take that value, so you take this value, and you add the reward that you receive if you're in state S, and you take the action AS. Right? So this formalizes exactly what I've just shown. Okay, so now we know how to get the correct value function given a policy. However, we have already remarked that this is not an optimal policy, right? From this state, it would be much better to move to the left rather than to the right. So how can the agent learn an optimal policy given a value function? Well, there's not much learning, actually. Um, it should simply look into the neighboring states and then move towards that state that gives a maximum reward. 
at least in this case where the reward on the way into that state would be equal in all cases. Yeah. So the, if the agent knows what the reward is, it gets um, it uh, if it does a step into another state and it sees the value in that state, it can figure out uh, what sort of the optimal direction to go. And in that sense, it would be optimal to go from here to there rather than from here to there. Yeah. And this is expressed by this equation. So the action that the agent takes in state S should be the one that gives the maximum expected reward. And the maximum maximal expected reward, so this is the maximum uh, operation here, over the different actions that are possible to take, right? A dash are the different options that the agent has. Um, and this expected reward is a combination of the value of the state where the agent ends up in after having done this action and the reward that it receives on the way into the state. Uh, and that's the sum and then the agent simply figures out uh, what's the optimal action to take based on this. So there's no real learning here here involved. That is something um, that can be done right away. So here we see what happens if we iterate these two processes. So we iterate deciding on a policy, then learning the optimal, the correct value function, then based on that decide on the optimal policy because we have seen it is not optimal to go from this state to that state. It would be rather optimal to go to the left state. Um, so that would be the optimal policy given this value function. Then based on this policy, the system can learn a new value function because now it realizes that going from this state to that state uh, uh, makes this re expected reward minus 1 rather than minus 5. And now it turns out that going from this state to that state is better than going to the right. So we adapt the policy again and then based on that we can learn the true value function. And this now is the true value function and this is actually um, an optimal policy. I mean if the agent is in this state it could also go to, go to the left. So it's not a unique policy, optimal policy but is, it is one of the optimal policies. Now it's not very efficient to first converge completely on the true value function and only then decide on a new uh, policy. It's better to do both simultaneously actually. And this is uh, this can be done by combining the two equations that we had above. So the action that we take is always the optimal action in that current situation. Right. Given the value function that we currently have, we take the optimal action. This is how the agent decides where to go and then we use the uh, equation from above to update the value function. So this would be the most primitive, simplest form of reinforcement learning. So that is known as temporal difference learning, uh, although there are uh, more refined versions of that and there are a lot of ways to improve on that. In particular, there are also ways to um, to deal with uncertainty. Right now we have argued we have a, a deterministic system, a deterministic environment, uh, but you have to s use some other strategies if you have a probabilistic environment. But this is sort of the the most basic version of reinforcement learning and gives you a sort of a feeling for what the principles are.